Hey, Hickok 45. How's this for some contrast on the shooting table? We got a uh, Browning VAR 1918. Reproduction, of course. You've seen it. It's the Ohio Ordnance Works uh, Monstrosity. The gigantic 30 6 developed by John Browning. Well, we also have the SCAR 17S. Okay, what are we doing? Why would we compare these two? Well, I, I mentioned to John as we were uh, shooting this the other day, you know, really, this is cool, but the SCAR 17 is the same gun, you know, isn't it? You know, and more we thought about it, but yeah, it really is. And uh, maybe I'll do a compare and contrast thing, just, just for kicks, really. Uh, and so we'll just kind of talk about the evolution of firearms a little bit and uh, how they've evolved into this sort of thing. Mainly because you had, like, this was innovative in the, in the day, you know, in 1917, 1918. You got a 20 round box magazine, select fire. Uh, this one's not, but you know, select fire, semi automatic or fully automatic. And something a man, a real man, could carry, you know. Uh, was pretty new, pretty innovative. At least one that was uh, that worked and lasted for decades and was used for decades in, in battle. Uh, you know, and something you could pick up and, and shoot. Well, that's kind of what the SCAR is. In a 30 out 6 you know, a bullet weighing around 150 uh, grains, going what? I should have uh, reviewed my ballistics. So 30 out 6 308 in the NATO con uh, configuration is, what, 2,500 feet precise? There's not much difference, whatever it is, uh, between 308 uh, military specs and 30 out 6 you know, mil spec, you know, NATO rounds. I don't think there's much difference, really. Uh, and so it's kind of evolved into something like this that a man, woman, can carry a 20-round box magazine, uh, basically the same uh, ammunition ballistically, uh, select fire. This one's not. This one's semi-automatic, just like that one. But, you know, these are, of course, in military configuration available in select fire. So this really, in a lot of ways, I mean, there's other guns we could argue, too. Obviously, I don't, I don't have them, but this is one I have. Uh, in terms of a modern one that's that's really modern, you know, and of course your folding stock and all the different things You know the the FN SCAR has uh, Lighter weight materials and uh, of course reliability and just everything of course that thing is reliable uh, But very very similar in lots of ways uh, it's 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 if if I could get in a time machine and drop in I wouldn't want to but drop in somewhere in World War II Say, hey, buddy, uh, bring that BAR over here to me. I know your arms are getting tired. Take this. <laughs> First, it'd be a little, he'd think I'd come from another planet. Probably think that anyway. But uh, what is that? Well, basically, buddy, it's the same thing you've got. All right? Uh, just a little different. So, anyway, we thought it'd be kind of interesting just to, to get them both out. And, uh, I don't know, just kind of uh, focus on, you know, how far we have come in terms of firearms technology because this thing is 20 pounds and this is about eight you know depending you know and it feels like one pound as compared with this okay uh in other ways they're similar though too aren't they you got a the bolt uh gas operated 20 round magazine same kind of magazine and spring technology you know so some ways we've come a long way in other ways a firearm is a firearm you know safety's in the same place and uh, both hit hard. They both really did. Let's just take a couple of shots with this one. The difference, of course, is <laughs> this thing is very heavy and uh, kind of unwieldy in a lot of ways. Safety's on. Uh, it's even difficult to get <laughs> into action for me. Uh, so, you know, if I'm going to be uh, moving across the field of fire quickly, this one is not quite as handy. Uh, in terms of getting down on it, I could take a shot at the red plate over there. If I get the safety off, it's a little more awkward on the safety. I hit it. <laughs> uh, I could move around and shoot something here. And... But it's a big old heavy thing. Uh, does the job though, it's reliable. All right, now. That's safety's on, and right there, the difference, <laughs> the difference, lightweight, uh, 
That firearm is very, uh, it absorbs recoil extremely well because it's so heavy, of course. This is not heavy, but it actually does absorb recoil pretty well. I can pull it up. Now this one's loud. I hate that muzzle brake. Keep meaning to change it out. Same thing. Except, you know, much handier to manipulate, you know. Boom, boom, you know, boom, boom. <laughs> a lot, a uh, lot handier for, for combat or whatever. Nice, nice. Now the other thing is, of course, in full auto, you would think, well, the VAR has it way, or, you know, over this uh, by a long shot. I've never fired one of these in full auto, have I? Guess not. But I have fired them, uh, tried to fire them fast, and uh, just the technology, the bolt, and the spring system, and uh, the, the design of it, it does pretty well too. Let's, uh, let's work on one of these propane tanks here, like that one. I'll try to shoot it fast. Yeah. I mean, you can just, you can hold it right on with no trouble. And in full auto, I, I, think, I don't think it'd be a problem. For one thing, you don't have to concentrate on the trigger pull. You can just, just, just hold it down and keep it right on, right on target. So, that one's clear now. This one, uh, because of something called gravity, it's pretty easy to shoot it also. <laughs> Let's try. All right. <laughs> nice. It doesn't uh, knock you around much either. Bolt doesn't stay back on it, I notice. Uh, send it back to the factory. Now that's the way they were designed, I think. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I thought I'd just be interested to take a quick look at both of these, you know, kind of in context or maybe out of context. You know, how far we've come, uh, a lot of the similarities. Okay, Homeland Security heard me shooting. <laughs> uh, I promise, I promise they're legal. Uh, but just kind of neat. This really goes back a long way, 1917, and uh, a very, very effective uh, battle rifle. You know, the Browning BAR, just a mammoth of a firearm. Uh, yet today we have the we have the good fortune to be able to have really anything that offers, unless you can think of something I'm not thinking of, really. Uh, maybe opportunity to build muscle, but uh, I, I can't really think of anything that this doesn't give you, provided it gets reliable. Now you may have one you had trouble with or something like that, you know, notwithstanding that. Uh, these things are pretty good reputation of being very reliable, and they just have all the same uh, basic qualities uh, that you get with that, you know, in a, in a different way. So I thought it was kind of neat to, uh, to think about them together. We are really living in good times. Lots of cool firearms, and we are reaping the benefit of a lot of innovation. And uh, it's it's really uh, it's really interesting just to note the difference, but yet still appreciate you know where we came from and uh, the history, uh, the romance of these old wood and steel firearms. There's just nothing like it, and uh, just be sure. You don't drop it on your toes. Life is good.